Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and welcome Chief Marshal, Provost, and Dean of Faculty Vincent Mano, the class of 2017, and the commencement procession. Welcome to the 12th commencement of the Franklin W. Olin College of Engineering. To open our ceremony, we will observe a moment of remembrance. You are invited to remain silent and reflect in your own way on the values of, of our community and on those no longer with us.
Thank you. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of Olin College, Dr. Richard K. Miller. Well, it may be outside, but it's joyful inside today. It's great to see all of you. If there are any benefits to the rain, it may mitigate to some extent the effects of allergies, so I might even be able to get through this speech. We'll see. Well, on behalf of the faculty and staff at Olin College, let me welcome all of you to our 12th commencement ceremony. I particularly want to recognize and welcome our several distinguished guests who are here on the platform today, including Dr. Kerry Healy, president of Babson College, Dr. Andrew Shannon, who's the provost of Wellesley College. <laughs> Current and former members of our board of trustees and members of our senior staff. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the F.W. Olin Foundation once again for their vision, courage, and generosity, which established this wonderful institution and ultimately made possible this day of celebration and achievement for the class of 2017. Will you please join me now in thanking Mr. Larry Milas and Mr. Bill Norton. Larry and Bill. And Mr. <laughs> Today is very special for another reason too. It's Mother's Day. If you are a mother here today, I would like to ask you to stand and be recognized. Just now. Paraphrasing Maslow, the psychologist, the most important thing in every person's life is to be the most important person in someone else's life. Mothers lead the way in demonstrating what that means to us, so I'm so grateful to have you here with us in sacrificing your Mother's Day for our ceremony. I also want to extend a personal welcome and thank you to our commencement speaker, Mr. Patrick Awa, a globally recognized education leader who was founder and president of Ashesi University has created an innovative model for educating a new generation of leaders to transform Africa. Awa founded Ashesi in 2002, which happens to be the same year that Olin College opened its doors, to provide a greater educational set of opportunities in his native Ghana. Today, it's considered one of Africa's leading institutions of higher learning, drawing students from 20 African countries and enrolling nearly 800 students, about half of whom are women. Its innovative liberal arts curriculum focuses on ethical leadership, entrepreneurship, and critical thinking. He holds bachelor degrees in both engineering and economics from Swarthmore College, an MBA from UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business, and honorary doctorates from Swarthmore College and Babson College. He worked as an engineer and program manager at Microsoft before he moved back to Ghana to found Ashesi, motivated by the dramatic impact that education had in his own life. I know we're all looking forward to hearing from you, Patrick, in a few minutes. <laughs> now, on to the class of 2017. There are 83 students today receiving their diplomas, and we are very proud of each and every one of you. Many of you will be heading out to graduate school at a wide range of places, including, for example, Northwestern University, Johns Hopkins University, Vanderbilt University, Imperial College London, Glasgow School of Art, University of Washington, University of California, Davis, Boston University, and others. And your class includes a Fulbright Scholar. In fact, Olin has once again recognized as the top producer of Fulbright Scholars this year, when including several of our alumni, and a DAAD Scholar for graduate study somewhere in Germany. And if our history is any indication, Several more of you will eventually win NSF graduate research fellowships in the next few years. In fact, five recent alumni were chosen for this award earlier this year. You're obviously well positioned now to develop deep expertise in your chosen fields, and we're very proud of that. 
three of you are going to work on your own to for a startup and a handful of you are going to work for companies started by an old and alone this the rest of you are going to work for companies with great diversity in size location and type of work from google to i b m to amazon robotics to microsoft to tesla to raytheon general motors athena health and so on and so on way too many more than to mention them all but for all of you this day is a milestone both for you and for your family and for olin as well you are the 12th graduating class to join our alumni body of adventurers risk takers and visionaries i believe that in the long run universities are not known by their national rankings nor their faculty nor the ideas that they publish nor their curriculum instead they're ultimately known by the alumni that they produce and we couldn't be more proud of you not just because of the way you have distinguished yourselves with your academic accomplishments but primarily because of the people you have become in some ways today marks an ending you have worked on your last project at olin you have presented your final expo and soon you'll be receiving your diploma which forever grants you unique status as an olin graduate but it is also the beginning as you leave this place to take the next step in your life if you if we have done our job right you'll be leaving with more than a diploma your time at olin will have inspired you to go out into the world and make it a better place we hope you have a head start in finding your purpose and mission in life it seems appropriate today to talk about the impact of inspiration because i see it everywhere on our campus i see it in our classrooms i see it at expo i hear it every day in talking to students and faculty and i've seen olin itself become a source of inspiration for educators and institutions around the globe in fact olin has now hosted more than 2000 visitors from 750 universities in 50 countries just since 2010 because they have been inspired by what is happening here on this campus. I'm sure during your years at Olin you've you've seen and felt the impact of inspiration too. Perhaps as students, inspiration came as you soared to new heights with a research drone or as you learned how to design adaptive technologies for people who needed them. Or perhaps it was in engineering for humanity. as you listen to senior citizens describe their needs and came up with ways to make a positive difference in their lives in all of these cases if you were lucky you were inspired not just by some thing but by some one who also nurtured your dreams and became a mentor to you i know what that's like because it happened to me as an undergraduate some of you may have heard me uh, talk about a fellow named mel ramey because he is on our Owens Presidents Council. Um but you may not know that this same Mel Ramey changed the course of my life. You see, while I was a good student in high school, I would have never been admitted here at Owen. And it would have been a bad thing for me if I had. Um I was not ready at that stage in my life. My rural high school in a farming community in California produced about 100 graduates a year, and certainly in my year. And although I graduated number 2 in my class, I believe only about a dozen or so of us went on to college, and only about a half of those went to a four-year college. But since I did well, see, I thought I was going to be a world beater. So I applied to Stanford and to Caltech and to the University of California. And although I didn't realize it then, I was really not well prepared for college. And I was denied at Stanford and I was denied at Caltech and it didn't take them very long to figure that out. However, because of my class rank, the University of California was bound by law in those days to admit me. <laughs> so one of the first people I met when I arrived at UC Davis was Mel Ramey. I was among the first 20 advisees that Mel ever had as a college teacher. He arrived there the same year that I did. He was the first engineer I ever met. He was also the first person with a PhD I'd ever met. It was not just who he was, although that was inspiring too, but it was how he made time for me and nurtured my dreams that left a mark on me. He changed what I believed about myself. in that difficult transition to college in large part 
He is why I'm standing in front of you today. Although I left UC Davis campus after graduation, I never fully left Mel Ramey. I continued to stay in touch with him throughout my career. In fact, he came on sabbatical leave to Olin College a few years ago to teach a course with me on structural design. How cool is that? <laughs> I've thought a lot about what he did that inspired me so much. I know he authentically cared about me as a person. He inspired my learning through his enthusiasm and love for structural mechanics. He spread hope, not cynicism, not just to me, but to everyone he met. Although with a few others I met later, Mel was not just my teacher. He was also not just my coach. He was my mentor. You see, a mentor changes what you believe about yourself, and that's why I'm here. I learned from Mel that students don't care what you know until they know that you care. And if they know you care, it can change their lives. It changed mine. There is now evidence from studies that the polling firm Gallup has done that this is true for most college students, not just me. Gallup's recent survey of more than 30,000 college graduates from hundreds of universities shows how important two crucial elements are in the long-term success of graduates. The first one, students feeling that they had at least one professor who cared about them as a person, who inspired their learning, and who nurtured their dreams. The other question, students who had an opportunity to apply what they learned in a real-world context before they graduate. Graduates who strongly agreed that they received this kind of support during their college doubled their odds of being engaged in their work and thriving in their overall well-being later in life. That's a factor of two. Yet, as profoundly important as these elements are to long-time success in work and life, only about 3% of all college graduates in America strongly agreed that they received both of these experiences during their college education. Now, I sincerely hope that 100% of you received those experiences here. It turns out that when it comes to being engaged at work and thriving after college, what you studied and where you went really don't matter as much as you might believe. But having a meaningful internship, working on a long-term project, being actively involved in extracurricular activities, and being emotionally supported by others during your time on college campus, that's what really matters. What students need at their core is caring, the kind of caring they get from a mentor, the kind of caring I was lucky enough to experience in my undergraduate studies because of Mel Ramey. I hope that this kind of education is what you experienced here at Olin. That has been a personal goal of mine from Olin's inception. Now, UC Davis recently named a portion of the Student Community Center for Mel Ramey to recognize the impact he's had on generations of students many of whom are African-American, like Mel. But Mel's health is failing now, and this has affected me personally. Well, I hope you will take the inspiration you received here at Olin and go out into the world and share it. I hope you will build upon it as you move through your life, because that will not just have a positive impact on you, but on everyone around you. The voices of cynicism in our society are growing loud. We need your soft voice of vision and hope now more than ever. There's no more powerful thing that you can do with your life than to dedicate it to inspiring others in the world to make it a better place. Just ask our commencement speaker today. Wherever you go now, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. And may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Good luck and goodbye. now like to introduce Ken Stokes, who is representing the Board of Trustees. The good news with four people speaking this afternoon, I can guarantee 75% of them will be outstanding. 
On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Franklin W. Olin College of Engineering, it's an honor to add my welcome to this, to the class of 2017, their families and friends, our many other guests, and indeed the entire Olin community to this, the 12th commencement of Olin College. As the father of an Olin alum, I'm especially pleased to welcome the parents today to this very special celebration. Having sat in the audience right down there just five years ago, I know firsthand the joy you are undoubtedly feeling today as your children, now young adults, are about to complete their transformational Olin College experience and embark on an exciting new chapter in their lives. From the tremendous excitement of participation in Candidates Weekend four or five years ago, followed by the, <laughs> that anxious day waiting for the brown UPS truck to show up <laughs> with the good news, and you all received it obviously, and finally sending your sons and daughters off in August to Olin, you probably can't believe how quickly the time has passed. Moving forward, I know that no one came here today excited at the prospect of hearing what I had to say, so I promise I'll be brief. I want to share three messages with today's graduates, all focused on expressing thanks. And I can think of no better way to start than with a quote from President John F. Kennedy, who said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. First then, on behalf of my fellow trustees in the college, I want to extend both a hearty congratulations and a very sincere thank you to the members of the graduating class. Congratulations on successfully iterating through four years of hard work and hard play, and thank you for being enthusiastic participants and important contributors to the educational laboratory that lies at the very heart of Olin. As alumni of the college, as Rick mentioned, you will be prized not just for your knowledge and your skills, but for the mindsets and can-do attitudes you have developed and nurtured during your time here. You graduate as Olin engineers, well prepared to ask the right questions, solve the toughest problems, and make great and wonderful things happen and you will go on to enjoy success in a wide variety of career and advanced educational pursuits. Undoubtedly, a very bright future awaits you all. My second message of thanks is really very straightforward. If you haven't already done so, please take the time later today to thank everyone who has supported you to this point in your life's journey, your family, your friends, your classmates, and the faculty and many other members of the Olin community with whom you've shared so much over the last four years. My third and final message of thanks starts by taking a moment to look back. For at least we forget, none of us would be here today were it not for an engineer named Franklin W. Olin. His entrepreneurial success in a variety of business pursuits yielded great wealth. Wealth that in a wonderful act of philanthropy, he used to create the Olin Foundation in 1938, a couple years before I was born. A foundation that over six decades of operation funded the construction of 78 buildings on 58 campuses across the country. A foundation whose boldly courageous and unprecedented final act was the creation and, and initial, uh, initial endowment of Olin College. And although I was never involved with the Olin Foundation, as Rick pointed out, there are two gentlemen behind me today who were. Larry Milas and Bill Norton are founding trustees of the college. They are, highly, they, are, they are former board chairs who have given this speech before and who continue to serve as highly respected trustees today. They served as influential directors of the Olin Foundation in its latter decades, and they deserve our help, heartfelt thanks for both their vision and their continuing dedication to the college's success. I would ask you to stand, but you've already done so. But if it's cold up here, please. <laughs> But, but thanking Larry and Bill is not why I've shared this Olin Foundation history lesson, and yet the answer is almost as simple. Because it was the hope of the Olin Foundation, and a hope shared by the college, that in addition to a world-class education, our graduates would take with them an appreciation for the role of philanthropy in making the world a better place. As Olin students, it's something you've seen and personally benefited from, and something you've undoubtedly already begun to practice through one of the college's many community service activities. So on behalf of the college trustees, 
I remind the class of 2017 that in addition to abiding by the college's founding precepts to do good for humankind, in the years ahead, we also call upon you to emulate Mr. Olin himself and to support causes that are important to you with your time, your talents, and your treasure. You are graduating from a great young college, a college not yet 20 years old, whose reputation has grown mightily while you were here and whose already outstanding reputation, your own future acts and achievements will strengthen even further. Like the 11 graduating classes that preceded you, you will now become ambassadors for the widely respected new paradigm in engineering education that will continue to evolve and emerge from this campus. Be thankful for the opportunity you've had and demonstrate that thankfulness by sharing your good fortune with others in the broadest sense possible. In closing, we wish you all abundant health, happiness, and success, and a hearty congratulations again to the Olin College class of 2017. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Eleanor Funkhauser, who will bring greetings from the class of 2017. I want to use this opportunity to speak directly to my class. I'll leave it to the other speakers to reassure the rest of you that this was a good idea. <laughs> hey classmates, I know it's set at graduations. I'm a youngest sibling. This isn't my first rodeo. We are all going to change the world. It's not that the expression makes me uncomfortable, but I find it a little funny because I just don't think it's true for all of us. I don't think it's wrong to be ambitious or found a global nonprofit or climb the ladder at a Fortune 500 company. It's not what I want for myself. I personally want to use my engineering degree to put a roof over my head so that I can cook dinner with my family and start a garden and answer the phone when my friends call. No judgment either way. I don't care what you do with your degree. No matter what that is, you'll have a whole life around it where the big stuff goes on. Birthdays, funerals, fights, family dinners. Regardless of whether the work you do changes the world, the way you act on the everyday scale is absolutely going to impact the people close to you. And going to Olin provided an unbelievable amount of material to shape how you will do all of the interpersonal stuff. Because what's weird about Olin 80 people should never live together for four years. <laughs> what an amplifier. I've seen tens of people at a level of personal exposure I normally expect with a few extremely close friends. Being housemates for four years meant we saw each other in our PJs, which is kind of cute but it also meant seeing each other in what I can only describe as our emotional PJs. The uncut footage, highest highs, lowest lows. I thought this dichotomy, joy and depression, laughter and anxiety, was characteristic of the Olin experience. But honestly, it's probably not just Olin, it's probably just what everyone's life is like, and it's just that with most people, I wouldn't have normally seen that an iceberg under every surface. I think this exposure taught us to choose our words carefully and reevaluate people we may have written off at first and pay attention to the social currents around us. Accelerated compassion. On the flip side, social burnout. It's a well-known fact that living with someone will take any problems with the friendship or relationship and amplify them times 10. So we experienced that on a large scale. 
We might like to think it made us really good communicators, but what if instead it just made us masters of compartmentalization? Someone messed up, you didn't want to fight, and you didn't have time to fix it. We got sloppy. We lied to each other, we froze each other out, we ignored each other's requests to keep the house clean or lock its door. I think it was survival mode. Just had to make it through. But now we're through. And that leaves a couple options. You can chalk it up to, I did what I had to do to get through Olin, and I really wouldn't blame you. The only thing is that that risks making these behaviors into habits. The other option is to dig through, look for patterns. Could a different phrasing have saved the friendship? What did I need from that teammate? How would I want a breakup to feel? We have all this material to work with now, four crazy dense years of it. I think I'm delivering on my promise to avoid an inspiring speech when I tell you that I think it's a good thing to have a little bit of regret, just a little bit. All things in moderation. A little regret alongside the happy memories and the pranking victories and the inside jokes. Maybe we'll even leave Olin with a few regrets of its own. <laughs> Enjoy your quiet life, or changing the world, or whatever. I'd like to close with this quote, even though it has nothing to do with the theme of the speech, because it's my favorite. <laughs> it's by an artist named Joey Camo. It's time to make yourself proud and everyone else a little nervous. I would now like to introduce Assistant Professor Paul Rubelow, who will bring greetings from the faculty and staff of Owen College. All right, I feel like this can't be said enough, but uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day and <laughs> a very special Mother's Day to my wife, Caitlin, who is celebrating her very first one today. I feel honored to be delivering greetings from the faculty and staff to the graduating class of 2017. I feel like I've gotten to know you guys so well over the years that today I almost feel like I'm graduating myself. Um, I'm going to speak about a concept that is familiar to all of us at Olin College, and this is the concept of the Olin bubble. <laughs> Parents, even if you're not familiar with this term, you'll probably experience its effects. When your child was in their first year at Olin, did you count down the days until they returned home for Thanksgiving, only to discover that once they did, you couldn't understand a word they were saying? <laughs> Do they say things like, I was up all night working with the ninjas on ISIM and Modsim, and the next day I had to practice for OCO. What is this strange new language, you might have thought? Did they learn this from Linder? And is Linder a person or simply an acronym? <laughs> We're a small community. We have a common aspiration of changing engineering education, and we spend a lot, actually really a whole lot, of time together. As a result, we seem to have invented our own language. Along with our liberal use of acronyms, words like Olin-y and Olin-esque are thrown around liberally. As a result, we often invoke the concept of the Olin bubble as a way to poke fun at ourselves and our tendency to get overly wrapped up in the particulars of our small community. However, in my view, the Olin bubble gets a bad rap. Today, I want to remind you of the ways that living in this bubble has shaped you for the better. What's striking about this place is that not only do strange words flow through the air, but so do unusual and challenging ideas. For instance, when our students do a project, they don't simply ask how, 
They ask why and for whom. Why is this the right thing to build? Why is this the right concept to learn? And whom will it benefit? When our students take a class, they don't view themselves as passive learners, but instead assume the role of co-creators of a learning experience. Our students don't view Olin as static, but instead they constantly strive to make things better. Whether it's redesigning spaces on campus uh, to make them more supportive of our curriculum, um, or critically examining our culture with an aim to be more welcoming of diversity, our students are never satisfied with the status quo. Over the last four years, I've been lucky enough to have a front row seat as this class learned, mastered, and eventually shaped these ideas. You all are pretty awesome. However, I'm not bringing up your many incredible ideas, habits, and ways of thinking simply as a way to praise you. I'll leave that for your parents. Today, I want to remind you of how rare and fragile these things are outside of the Olin bubble. The longer you live within the Olin bubble, the easier it is to take it for granted. You forget about all the thought and energy that go into making Olin's values and culture. For instance, one of our core values of risk-taking and exploration is established in part through Olin's first semester grading policy of pass no record. Some members of the class of 2017 embraced this policy so fully that they adopted it as a personal mantra. <laughs> Should I join a 10th club this semester? Pass no record! Should I do research with three professors this semester? Pass no record! This sort of space for exploration isn't easily found outside the bubble. I don't recommend yelling, pass no record at your boss if you miss an important <laughs> deadline during your first few months on the job. Another example is that our collective embrace of the philosophy of continuous improvement is bolstered by the fact that we live in a small community that encourages change and allows for experimentation. That a group of Oliners can envision a way to make this place better, build consensus, and execute within a matter of months is a powerful and rewarding aspect of life within our community. Outside of the bubble, you will find that achieving change is often a frustrating process that rarely yields immediate rewards. In light of these challenges, Today, as your greeter, I am issuing my final assignment to you all. It's a three-part assignment and is due on Monday. <laughs> First, I want you all to reflect on the values you've developed over the last four years. While everything is still fresh in your mind, think back to the people, experiences, and aspects of the college that shaped you. Second, I want you to, to decide which of these values you are willing to fight for and which you are willing to let fall by the wayside. Third, I want you to think about the strategies you will use to hold on to these values when faced with currents that run counter to them. For example, when I, an idea of yours that you believe in meets with resistance, how will you respond to this obstacle so that it doesn't dampen but instead strengthens your resolve? If you find that the pillars of reason, science, and knowledge that are taken for granted at Olin are undermined outside of it, how will you speak with a clearer, louder voice rather than retreating from public discourse? More than the specific content you've learned during your four years at Olin, it is the ways of thinking, the ways of challenging, and the ways of empathizing that you must hold onto tightly as you leave this place. This is how you will each change the world. It is impossible to overstate the ways in which you have impacted, contributed to, and shaped life within the Olin bubble. And I can't wait to hear about the amazing things you do as you step outside. Congratulations to the class of 2017. Now I am pleased to introduce Patrick G. Alwa Jr., the founder and president of Ashesi University. Thank you. President Miller, members of the board, family and friends, and dear class of 2017, I'm so thrilled to be speaking here at Olin today. Thank you for the invitation to join you as we celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2017 and to see them enter a new and exciting chapter of their lives. And happy Mother's Day to all you moms. 
we can't say it enough. I have always been fascinated by Olin College. Like Olin, the institution that I founded, Ashesi University, began instruction in 2002. Our pioneer class, like Olin's partners, consisted of just 30 students. Like Olin, we dreamed of creating a new educational experience and becoming an exemplar for others. I marveled at the audacity of Olin's mission to redefine undergraduate engineering education in the United States in a higher education system that I already considered one of the best in the world. I was inspired by Olin's decision to engage its pioneer students in co-designing this institution. It was such a courageous, brilliant, clever approach. But the thing that I find most inspiring about the education you've, re you've received here at Olin is a singular focus on engineering as a means to solve problems for people. This paradigm of putting humanity at the center of your work makes you a real treasure for the world. Whenever I speak at commencement ceremonies, I like to talk about something topical, something current that has captured my imagination, my attention, and caused me to reflect on what the future holds for all of us. It hasn't been easy deciding what to talk about this year. Brexit and the recent US presidential election certainly captured the attention of the planet. We see conflicts around the world, income disparities, and nationalistic rhetoric all of which have led many to believe that perhaps globalization will not succeed. Yet, there are other phenomena that ought to command our attention too. Thanks to a global effort to reduce childhood death rates around the world, 122 million lives have been saved since 1990. In Africa, malaria deaths have been cut in half since 2000. And thanks to recent advances in vaccine development, we expect to see even more progress in the coming years. Thanks to globalization, it is estimated that the number of people living in extreme poverty has been cut in half since 1990. 700 million of these people live in China alone, as that country has increasingly become the world's manufacturing capital. According to the U.S. Federal Reserve, the U.S. economy is on its way to full employment. The world is making progress. What this means for those of you graduating today is that you face good prospects for beginning successful careers. This is especially true given your background in engineering from such an excellent institution. But of course, this also means that everyone has high expectations of you. We do. We do. <laughs> Some people expect you to become the next Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, or the next Elon Musk. Some expect you to build the next company that designs the latest groundbreaking, world-changing, life-saving technology. And in a way, this is a heavy burden. When I was in your shoes back in 1989, a foreign student from Ghana, what I was really worried about was going back home to a country that was just emerging from an economic crisis. All I could think of was, thank God I had found a well-paying job before my US visa expired. I was not in the mood to hear any of the go forth and change the world stuff that we all talk about during graduation ceremonies. But here I am, giving you precisely that. <laughs> but I do so because it remains important today as it was when I was graduating. I know the difficulties of balancing altruism with personal ambition, 
especially at this point in your life. Yet I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't use this opportunity to remind you of the responsibility you owe, not just to the world, but to yourselves. My journey towards, quote, changing the world has taken a few different paths. I did not graduate from college with a plan to influence higher education in Africa. My focus was rather different on my commencement day. After college, I joined a software company that was well on its way to achieving what was, at that time, a very ambitious mission to put a computer in every desk and in every home. At Microsoft, I learned how to really make a difference in the world, working in a diverse team with a singular focus. I developed professional relationships and a network that would later serve me well in my current work. I saved financial resources that would enable my current enterprise. I got great advice from people far more experienced than I was. But even after that fantastic apprenticeship, is how I think of it, when I decided to leave the company to get involved in educating Africa's leaders, I felt a measure of fear. The goal that I had set for myself seemed as difficult as climbing Mount Everest. What would you do if you pl planned to climb Mount Everest? You'd probably learn, try to learn as much as you could about the mountain. You would try to find partners, buddies, to come on this journey with you. You would train your body and your mind for the task at hand. You would gather the necessary financial and technical resources for the climb. And when you finally got to the mountain, you would find a Sherpa to guide you up. That is what I did. After I left Microsoft, I went to business school at UC Berkeley to prepare for the task that I had set for myself. But occasionally I'd wake up thinking, what are you doing, Patrick? This is crazy. This is so risky. And then one day I chanced upon the words of Goethe, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius and power and magic in it. Begin it now. I typed up those words and I taped them to my mirror so I would read them every day. I found two buddies for the climb, the first being my wife and the second a classmate who agreed to join as co-founder. When we had completed our planning for the project, when I felt a sense of peace that we were going to start this university that I dreamed of, I thought, wow, this is the beginning. And so it is that our new university came to be called a Shesi, which means beginning in Fanti, a Ghanaian language. My message to you, class of 2017, is that the most arduous journeys require careful preparation you have received some of that preparation here at Olin, but you will need to continue preparing for the tasks at hand. Apprentice with someone. Nurture your professional and personal relationships. Find a buddy or buddies for the track. The world you will be operating in is going to be full of wonders and evolving threats. You will be living and working in a world that is experiencing exponential growth in scientific and engineering breakthroughs with profound consequences for humanity. The age of artificial intelligence will multiply economic output in a way that will likely eclipse what came during the age of artificial power, the steam engine, electricity, nuclear power, or even the information age the age of additive fabrication of 3D printing promises to democratize manufacturing around the world and even to change the output of manufacturing from just inert products to include bio biological material. The age of gene editing and synthetic biology will transform healthcare and agriculture. These technologies will strengthen our ability to deal with pressing problems such as the impact of climate change, and they hold real promise for improving human life. 
but these technologies will also present grave ethical and ethical questions and challenges for our world. The matter of human employment and connection will be made more urgent. Economists estimate that approximately 50% of jobs in the United States are at risk of competition from artificial intelligence and robots. Think, for example, about what self-driving vehicles will mean for taxi drivers or truck drivers. Matters of war and peace will assume a new urgency as these new technologies augment the capabilities of warring factions. Diplomacy and intercultural understanding and respect will be more important than ever before. Although generations have brought us to this point, your generation will be at the helm during this point of inflection. How exciting to be here as the world approaches a shift more, more profound than the discovery of electricity. And although you probably don't see yourself as leaders yet, you already are. The coming challenges of the world and the possibilities available for overcoming them will require great leadership from you. And it seems to me that to be great leaders, we must first be good citizens. We must first have empathy, a sense of neighborliness, a concern for the common good. It will matter too who we consider to be our neighbors, worthy of consideration in determining the common good. Finally, it seems to me that leadership in this rapidly changing world will require a lifelong commitment to scholarship, to learning from and proactively sharing knowledge with others. I leave you with these thoughts to ponder on this your commencement day, and I wish you Godspeed in the years and days ahead. Congratulations, all in class of Thank you.
It is now my pleasure to introduce the candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. Those who have completed their requirements have been recommended by the faculty to the Board of Trustees to receive the degree of Bachelor of Science in recognition of their academic accomplishments. Will the candidates please rise? By virtue of the power granted to Olin College by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and by the authority given to me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Computer Engineering, in Engineering, or in Mechanical Engineering according to the degree you have earned and the requirements you have completed with all of the attendant rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining to this degree. That means you can leave, move this little dazzly thing over to the left. <laughs> I'd now like to ask the class of 2017 to turn to their families and to express their appreciation for all the love and support that have helped you get to this point. I'd also like to ask the class to look to the right and to their left to show their appreciation for the help and support of the faculty and the staff of the college. Please be seated. To present the graduates, I now call on Dr. Vincent Mano, Provost and Dean of Faculty. We will be assisted in the distribution of the diplomas by Mrs. Linda Canavan, College Registrar. Now please hold your applause for each graduate until their name and also a 15 word passage for each candidate has been read. Uh, the first row graduates may now stand and approach the stage. Casey Ruby Alvarado. Two antennas married. The ceremony was okay, but the reception was excellent. Love you, parents. <laughs> Lindsay Andrade. Thanks to the amazing friends and family who pushed me along. Ahriho Kako. Tatiana Anthony. Family got me to Olin. Friends got me through. To all I love, thank you. <laughs> Cecilia Baird Arswald. She indulged herself from time to time. It helped remind her she was truly free. Claire E. Theory. If we make a robot dance the robot, is it just dancing? Let's find out. <laughs> Michael Robert Bogomazzo. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to do some scope? Mafalda Gira Borges. It would be harder to explain why I'd abstain than to turn in 15 words. <laughs> Kelly Ann Brennan. I've learned a lot. How about you? Engineering, design, and pottery too. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Danis Aaron Chelik. Thank you to my family for your unwavering love and support. Yeah. 
Shivali Chandra. Drivers, pick up your controllers. Entering tally up mode in three, two, one. Riley Van Wee Chapman. Here comes the second Chapman of the legacy. Watch as he crosses the stage gingerly. Cynthia Y. Chen. Fade in. Exterior. Great lawn. Day. Cynthia accepts diploma. Fade out. Roll credits and thank yous. Dennis Chen. Thanks and much love, mom, dad, Catherine, and friends. Adulthood, here I come. Gregory Michael Coleman. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for your support, and good luck to everyone. <laughs> Logan Kahi Davis. Thanks, everyone. Love you all. Here's to the next quest. Do the loop. Pinar Demichi. Mom, brother, thanks for coming today. Also, thanks to everyone who helped along the way. Juanita Marilyn D'Souza. Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. Thanks to all my family and friends. Nitya Danish Cody. Thanks, Amma, Appa, Murugan, Friendos, and Nicki Minaj for helping me stay in school. Devin Diggins. What do you mean I haven't been in art school for the past four years? Demeter Stwelov Dimitro. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Boris, and Lisa for supporting all my stupid decisions. <laughs> Emily Catherine Engel. Thanks to Mom for fearlessness, Dad for contentment, Turtle for boundless passion, and Olin for perspective. Gabrielle Ariana Ewell. Olin College football rocks. <laughs> Kyle Flores. There's never enough time to do all the nothing you want. <laughs> Madeline Jane Hort. Why do I want to be a mad scientist? Is that a trick question? <laughs> Nicholas Franchisi. Graduating from a place where lasers and robots are the norm. I'd do it again. <laughs> Ashley K. Funk. If you remain neutral in situations of injustice, you've chosen the side of the oppressor. Eleanor Mary Funkhauser. Homeward bound to a bathtub full of tea. Pratul Gatola. Thank you, Mamu, Baba, Elvis, Didi, and all my family and friends. Jai Nepal! So here, Murtaza Gajali. Nothing makes Earth seem so spacious as friends far away. They make latitudes and longitudes.
John Austin Green. Yes, I can finally stop pretending to be responsible. I mean, uh, thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Susan Marie Grimshaw. Family, your support meant everything. 2017, thanks for being my inspiration, motivation, teammates, and partners in crime. Subash Guba. To my sister Gita, okay, now I'm done following in your footsteps. Or am I? Najee Hakim. The best journeys answer questions we never even thought to ask. I love you, Mom and Dad. Ian Gardner Mackenzie Hill. Young and hopeful, we can boldly shape tomorrow. Stay optimistic, my friends. Mika Ichiki Welchus. Ian, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Bonnie Grace Ishiguro. You can't dance on a bro broken foot. I, I can. Watch me. Broken McKay. Bumho James Jang. As an old proverb goes, speak of the tiger, here comes my diploma. Thanks, fam. In song, Joe. Mom, Dad, The Breakfast Club, I couldn't have made it through without you. Thank you. Andrews Richard Johnson. Thanks for the amazing years of growth and adventure. Stay tuned for the next chapter. <laughs> Aditi Joshi. If we are not part of the resistance, then we are part of the status quo. <laughs> Myra Keane. Dad, I'll always race the crawfish. Anna Lee Knapp. So long and thanks for all the debt. <laughs> Sophia R. Lee. Thanks, Robolab, for making me an engineer. Thanks, parents, for making me a good person. <laughs> Margaret Joan Lederbach. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Ryan Louie. Indico generated their name with ML. Why didn't I do that for these 15? Hashtag should have used machine learning. <laughs> Anne Elizabeth Liberso. And there's a million things I haven't done, but just you wait, just you wait. Liani Lai. Mom, Dad, thanks for teaching me how to teach myself. <laughs> Filippos Limporopoulos. Four years later, and it's still all Greek to me. Love you all. <laughs> Megan Deborah McCauley. Austin to Boston. Berlin, too. Four years older, much wiser. Here's to new adventures.
Duncan Motier Michael. You think you can get me, rid of me this easily? I'll be back. Luke Richard Morris. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. Charles Mouton. Thanks, parents, for making me. Thanks, Aaron and Jeff, for making me a designer. Dakota W. Nelson. Hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side. Alicia Pagan. Black Lives Matter. Ask yourself, what world am I a product of? What injustices am I tolerating? Ali Ann Peltier. Local millennial graduates from Babson STEM School, Oberlin College, with a degree in hacking the mainframe. Ellie Pollock Muskin. I'd like to thank my family, friends, and five minute epoxy. <laughs> Ragini Rameshwar. Today was good. Today was fun. Tomorrow is another one. Thank you, family, friends, and Olin. Jacob E. Rydell. Mom and Dad, thanks for all the love and support. On to a bright future. <laughs> Abigail Phyllis Rodriguez. Thank you, Netflix, for getting me through four years of college. Hashtag product placement. Colin Laurie Ross. Thanks to my family and friends for your love and support these last four-ish years. <laughs> Joshua Sam Sapers. Crouch, bind, set. Oh, also, happy Mother's Day. Tony Roxanne Saylor. Thank you to my parents for giving me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. <laughs> Philip Edward Sager. Today, we leave as engineers. Does anyone know what this means? Enjoy three years, Peter. Michael Brian Sheets. Can confirm doing the impossible is pretty fun. Thanks, Mom, Dad, Andrew, and the Phoenicians. <laughs> Sid Single. By the way, ladies, I'm still single and always will be. Kevin Takuma Suzuki. Thank you very much to those who have helped me get this far. <laughs> Celine Ta. Do, 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 do. Just kidding. May the forces in your life always be in balance. Janiti Thurumali. I have found my voice. Amma, Appa, Vital, you gave me the microphone.
Mindy, two. We weren't sure about this one, but we're almost on, so let's just ship her. Megan Rose Ty. We don't need magic to change the world. We carry the power inside ourselves already. Griffin Sherwald. 1,400 hours in class, 4,000 hours doing homework, all for some paper and a handshake. Jennifer Lynn Vaccaro. Starting now, you are a hard, heartless career gal. You are a robot. Beep, bop, blurp. <laughs> Radmer Vanderheide. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time given us. Lindsay M. Vanderlyn. Tutorial cleared. Achievement graduate college unlocked. Thanks to everyone who supported me along the way. <laughs> Sawyer Edward Vaughn. Side by side or miles apart. Christopher Andrew Wallace. Friends are forever close to your heart. Sarah A. Walters. There is no belief so settled as not to be exposed to further inquiry. William Edward Warner. The rumors, stories, legends you've heard, all true. For Hein and everyone, keep defending Olin. <laughs> Jennifer Leanne Way. Thanks, Mom, Dad, Steph, and friends. Oh, and Happy Mother's Day, especially to you, Mom. Jay Ying Wei. Olin has changed me for better and for good. Thank you, friends, mommy, daddy, William. <laughs> Hannah Wilk. Mom always said thank your parents during award ceremony speeches. Thank you, parents. Jay Young Wu. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for getting me this far. <laughs> Wanjin David Zhu. Thanks, Mom, Dad, and my sister Kelly, and Olin for all your love and support. Congratulations, class of 2017, and welcome, alumni of Olin College.
This concludes the 12th commencement exercises. I hope you have enjoyed today's ceremony. I would like to invite everyone to join us for a reception in the dining hall and the oval.